Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm ready to do my first impression on the Arcform Slimfoot here. This is a very interesting knife. Uh, I recently unboxed it, I think, uh, you know, mid to end of last week. And um, I've had it in pocket a few times since then. I've taken it apart a bunch of times, actually. I'll get into that. Um, and I really dig it. Um, like I said, I've been carrying it a good amount. Um, I've probably had it in pocket, um, you know, maybe all but one day since I got it. Uh, really, this and the uh, Concept Knives Pelican EDC here have been in my pocket a lot since last week uh, when I got them. I got my LaCroix here, Key Lime. Ah, refreshing. And uh, so this knife is interesting. Arc Form here is a company that I don't know much about, and I don't know if I care to look into it much more, but um, I noticed on their website that they ship from Pleasant Grove, Utah, and I think, and it's like the same address as Flytanium, and on their website, it says something like, um, I don't know what it says, partnerships or something like that, just, just, no, I think it's like partnership, and then it says Flytanium, and and I know that Flytanium uses the same address as Blade HQ. Um, so I don't know what's going on there. If they just, excuse me, are all like somehow connected or if Blade HQ is owned by, or Arcform is run by somebody from Blade HQ and Flytanium. I don't know. I just noticed that and thought it was interesting. Um, and... These came out, I think, like a year ago, maybe two at this point. Um, and at the time, I thought they were really cool. They had uh, ones where it was like half carbon fiber, half titanium, or half copper, or whatever. And I don't know who made those. This this run right here is made by Riot, which is another reason why I jumped on it. Um, I don't know who made the previous ones. I did hear good things about them. And then they did a collaboration with ProTech where they did the Slimfoot Auto, which is a very popular knife as well. Um, and, you know, kind of the same story. I was not into right-handed knives. I wasn't spending as much on knives. And um, that's why I kind of never picked one of these up. And this was not on my radar at all. Uh, my buddy on Instagram, Brandon, uh, DM'd me sometime last week. And he's like, hey, these are dropping tomorrow. Are you getting one? And I was like, oh, I didn't even know. And it got me interested because I really like this design. It reminds me of like uh, a barber's like straight razor or something. It's just a really cool, uh, different, unique design. Um, and I'm really into Riot built knives right now. And I like the plain titanium look. Um, so all of it kind of worked together. And I, I picked one up the next day. And I think maybe these are still available. Um, I don't know how many they made. I, it, I don't know how well they advertised it or what. Um, it did kind of, it, it was curious that they didn't, you know, just kind of sell out like a lot of knives are these days. They get dropped and they're gone instantly. Uh, and I don't know if there's something up with that. Like maybe people already had them or I don't know, but I really love it. So, you know, um, if you can find one right now, Go snag it. Um, they have a website. I think it's arcform.com or something like that. Just Google arcform knives or arcform slim foot. You'll find it. Um, so anyway, I picked this up. It was uh, 320 bucks. Um, and again, we're talking Riot here. So we have a full titanium handle here. Um, obviously, two-piece construction with a back spacer. Um, we have a, a M390 blade that is three and a half inches long. Um, so I'd say, you know, maybe four and a half on the handle. You're probably looking at an eight inch knife. Um, but I am not a spec guy. So again, you can always look that up. Um, so yeah, aesthetically, this thing is just really cool looking. Um, it just looks like a straight razor, but it kind of has that like, futuristic look where 
it's not straight. It has a little bit of a lift right here, right? If I put it, you know, dead flat like this, I would guess that this kind of uh, tip here, not tip, but whatever you call it, is raised up above the handle a little bit. And this end is raised up too above this. So it just kind of has this unique look to it. So it's like futuristic, but also old timey. Uh, really, really interesting. So I love the uh, aesthetics on this knife. The spine of the blade kind of looks like it's crowned. Um, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. But it kind of looks like it's crowned, but it's not. It just has these kind of uh, mini swedges along the top on each side. And then the top is flat, but it kind of looks crowned and it feels crowned. It's very comfortable. Um, and there's no jimping on here anywhere except for the flipper tab. I don't count this as jimping. I just say that's, you know, aesthetics. It's, you barely feel it. So, um, yeah, aesthetically, really cool. Um, Action-wise on this guy, it's, it's awesome. So, uh, this flipper tab is again something a little different and, and unique uh, and it is set up to kind of just be dragged it's interesting you don't really light switch i guess you call it a light switch yeah um and you know you can try to push button it but it sort of ends up making you do the same thing and then you can kind of fail it so you really your only option is to just kind of you know crank it like that and unusual for me that is the only opening method on this knife uh i tried using this fuller here this mini fuller and i can't get enough pressure behind it to shoot it out um and yeah it has that one opening method and i really like a good flipper um and i've kind of gone away from them lately i've gotten a lot of thumb stud knives a lot of uh knives with opening holes and uh, i'm glad to have just kind of a classic flipper um with a unique design in the collection again, you know? So, um, again, the opening action is smooth. It's, um, it's intuitive. It's fun. It makes some good sounds on the open. And on the close, now this is interesting. This is something I wanted to to really discuss here on the close for Riot, I, I kind of expected it to to want to kind of drop, just kind of free drop home, like drop shut, like a lot of their knives do. This uh, F five point five here from Urban EDC Supply isn't exactly drop shut, uh, but it kind of has more of that feel to it, right? Um, at least to me, I feel a lot less, uh, hmm, I don't want to say resistance, just it's less smooth and more just kind of free dropping. Uh, do I have another example? I'm trying to think. I have some things loaned out. Oh, yeah, here. So this is a Chavez 229, right? And this is from Riyadh as well. They make this. And this thing... When you disengage it, it just drops, right? Uh, this thing's like a boat anchor. And that's what I expected because my uh, birch tree secant was like that as well, which I don't know if I mentioned. I sold that uh, to a buddy on Instagram. Shout out to MB Wild. Um, it just, I, I couldn't get over the, the thumb studs causing that Emerson wave opening. Um, I mentioned it in my first review of that knife. I, there's a couple times where I pulled it out of my pocket and it literally opened up because the thumb stud would get caught on on my pants. Uh, and I think it's because I was carrying it in my left front pocket instead of my right somehow. Um, maybe it wasn't designed for some reason to do that. Um, but that I couldn't get over that. And I loved that knife, but I just couldn't get over it, so I sold it. But that had a really free drop action, right? And this doesn't have that. This is a smooth, and I wouldn't even call it controlled sh drop shut because it doesn't really drop. You have to shake it a bit to get it to go. 
but it is extremely smooth. Um, so I took this apart to see what was going on. I wanted to see if I could clean it out because there, I've, I've had Riots where um, the action was a little gritty when I got it, right? And then I take it apart and there's a little bit of grit in there. Um, and that can happen for manufacturing or, you know, it was sitting around or in shipping or whatever. You know, it's just, it happens occasionally. Um, and this thing was spotless inside, completely clean. And I noticed the bearings, they are these, they're, they're plastic cage, they're polymer cage. It's like this white clear plastic and then there's the bearings in there where normally from Riot you get uh brass cage bearings right um which they're similar but brass versus the uh polymer I guess or nylon in terms of the cage maybe makes a difference but um this just doesn't drop but it's way smoother than any other Riot I've felt so it's it's just an interesting trade-off. Instead of the dropping shut, you get this glide. It it just smoothly glides and you feel it. You feel how smooth it is. It's it's honestly amazing. And I do think that was how this knife was designed to operate. And it has gotten smoother and smoother as I've used it more and more. And I flip this a lot because I'm trying to break it in. Um, and that detent ball is going to keep wearing a track into the M390 blade, right? And eventually it will be much more uh, drop shutty, but it's always going to be as smooth as this. It's just incredible. Um, and that's how this knife was designed. And I know that because I tried replacing these bearings. Um, the same buddy who told me about this knife, Brandon, he uh, is a big proponent of skiff bearings so skiff made blades you might know them from the drifter uh they do i think they're custom knives and they're not production they're custom they're handmade anyway uh or cnc made you know what i mean um they make bearings that you can buy to replace the uh, stock bearings in pretty much any knife they have uh, varying sizes and stuff and i bought a couple sets right here you can see um, so I bought three sets and two of them were the same size. So, uh, I made a trade with my buddy, Jake, uh, bearded gear, and I sent him a set. Um, but I tried these out and depending on the size, right? Some are going to fit, some aren't, and you can do measurements and stuff. There is a Google doc sheet out there somewhere that has a list of knives and which size to get. Uh, it doesn't have every knife, like it didn't have this, so I had to guess. Um, and if you want that spreadsheet, uh, hit me up, I can I can send you the link. But I tried, um, I tried, let me see, which one did I try first? So I think I tried um, this set first, right here. And they fit over the pivot, but they were too thick. Um, you can, It's really hard for you to see. But one set is thicker than the other. Um, but anyway, I tried one set and they didn't work. Um, the way Riot sets these knives up is they have they have um, the pivot in there, which it's weird, but the pivot is actually like seated into this scale. Um, it's like press fit into this scale. And I don't know if that's just this specific example or if that's how they do it. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how they do it because Riot doesn't usually screw up. Um, but I couldn't take the pivot out. It's not like this screw comes out and then there's a pivot screw, right? Or the other way around. Um, you take this screw out and you take this screw out and you still have a like circular cylind cylindrical pivot inside there that is seated into this scale right here uh, and press fit and then the way they do it is they take a stainless steel washer and they put that on the inside of the pivot on the scale on each side and then the bearings go 
onto the blade, right? So that way you have bearings going on the blade and then bearings going onto that stainless steel washer because um, you don't want the bearings going right against the titanium. At least not, that's not how Reup does it. Um, and the first set of bearings I tried to fit, the only way they would fit is if I took those stainless steel bearing washers out, right? And I, I got one out, but I couldn't get the other one out because that pivot thing was on there and I couldn't get a magnet in enough and I couldn't get anything in to get it out. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because basically I've heard that um, it wouldn't have worked anyway because then these bearings would have been running against the titanium scale and uh, apparently that doesn't work very well. So anyway, I tried the other set. And the other set actually fit perfectly. I think that's this one, the smaller one. And uh, here, if you want to get a better look at their bearings. They're just kind of, uh, I think they're phosphor bronze cage bearings. Uh, and they're just supposed to really help the action on a knife. And I think my... My mistake was thinking that they would help the action on a Riot made knife because Riot already has such good action and good quality that, I, you know, I don't think you can really improve upon that that much anyway. Um, so I did get a set to fit, but the action was identical to the way it is now. It was extremely smooth, but it wasn't, you know, drop shutty. Um, so I went ahead and just put the the nylon cage ones back in um, because I figured I could use those on something else, something maybe, you know, a little cheaper. I think that's kind of what what they're going for there because those cost like 10 or 12 bucks a piece for a set, which is pretty good. If you're going to take, you know, like a Civivi and you drop those in there, like I've heard of a lot of people putting them into the uh, Wee Banter. And it's supposed to really improve the action on the clothes um, and make it a lot more drop shutty, which it's already pretty good. Um, but like that's kind of the idea there. The, the idea isn't to take, you know, a Riot made knife and uh, somehow make it better. But maybe that does work in some cases. But anyway, I took it apart, put it together a bunch of times because of that. And the construction is really simple. I, I love taking apart a Riot knife. Um, you know, you just take the pivot out. It's all T8, so you take the pivot out on this side, I usually do. Um, that way you can kind of stack it when you put it back together flat. If you do this side, one, you got to worry about the frame lock being down there, and then you have the clip. So if you just kind of do it this way, I take a T8, take the pivot out, and then I'll take the T8, take these two back spacer screws out, and then this top scale will just pop right off um, and then you can just take the bearing the blade off clean everything down um, add your kpl on each side put the blade and the bearings back in stack the uh, scale back on drop the screws in and uh, bob your uncle it's so easy and um and they always go back together so perfectly you know every time i put the top scale back on it like clicks into place, you know, these two screws back here click in and then the pivot and the, um, the stop pin just kind of click back in and it just, it's a very, very good feeling, you know, cause you're like, all right, my knife's back together perfectly. Cause sometimes you don't know, you're just like squeezing stuff back and you're using the pivot to kind of like get everything locked back together. And then you're not sure. And is the centering good? I mean, the centering, almost immediately when you put that pivot screw in is lined up perfectly center. Um, every Riot I've had is like that, I think. Um, and if they've ever been off, it's been like a tiny touch and it's probably my imagination. Um, so anyway, long story short, the action is really good on this knife, but don't expect it to just drop shut now if you're right-handed and you're not afraid of getting cut a little bit uh, this guy will swing you know if you if you push the frame lock out of the way it will drop and keep dropping until you get your finger out of there i've cut myself a couple times right here 
not paying attention because I'll do this and I'll be low enough that the flipper tab clears my nail and then it'll come and it'll swing all the way down to this. Um, and then you just got to get out of the way. So anyway, action phenomenal. Carry. Carry is good on this guy. This clip is good. I was worried there was too much tension on it. Um, but whatever they did, it works. It pops in, it pops out. There's no issues. I thought maybe these three little relief cuts would be an issue, but they're not. Um, and yeah, carry is good. Um, you don't have a ton of knife sticking out, but you have some, but this is a pretty long slender, um, you know, thin knife. So it doesn't really matter to me at all. The clip's good. Um, ergonomics on this are interesting so you know this is a knife that i really like and i liked it immediately and when that happens i will start sending videos of it and recommending it to people that i chat with um like kyle and jake bearded gear d2m knives and gear we have a group chat and i'll start sending videos like guys this thing's awesome i love it and i'll be doing you know um, normal guy stuff. And I was doing that and I was thinking, even though this is a big knife, three and a half inches, you know, probably four and a half inch handle. And for me, I just get all four fingers on. And I was thinking, I can't recommend this to Kyle. I really want to, but I don't think his giant meat hook would even fit on this handle. I think this would be a three finger knife for Kyle. Honestly, I, I do. And that's because of the, the design. So one, there's no finger choil. If they had added a choil here, uh, it would be even more comfortable. But I kind of get that it would take away from the, you know, um, straight razor type look. So I get that. Um, and then there's all this room right here because of the flipper tab that is, you know, not used. So you end up starting your grip all the way down here. And that causes, you know, two issues at least. One is you have less handle to grip onto. So for a much bigger hand, I have a large 2XL, large 2XL, not 2XL. Um, and I just fit. So anything bigger than that, I think, might be an issue. Now, it is a pretty neutral handle. So even if you had three fingers on, it might still just work anyway. Uh, and then the other issue is, for cutting-wise, it's not very uh, prone for good, like, precision cutting or small detail-type stuff. Like, yeah, you can creep up and pinch grip it like this, but you're not getting anywhere near that tip. You know, you would have to do this kind of thing to get up to the tip. Um, you know, so in a normal grip like this, you're not getting the best, like, detail kind of you know, uh, cutting. Uh, now for just like slicing and stuff, this is good. Um, and the blade lends itself to has a really cool, uh, hollow grind here. And then it has that, uh, kind of sheep's foot blade, uh, modified sheep's foot cleaver, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it, it, it is relatively thin behind the edge. It's a good slicer. Um, I did use it to open a package and um, or two, and it's not the best for that because it's kind of a thick tip here, right? That's what you get with the cleaver, and you don't have like a super stabby point, so penetration's not great. So trying to get into, say, like a priority package box, right? You're, you're more or less jabbing it in and then sawing through because you're trying to drag this thick blade through it. Um, so it's not the best for that kind of stuff. Um, it'll get the job done, but if you're looking for like an everyday carry and you want to, um, you know, cut up food and open packages and do all those types of things, um, then this isn't really the best option for that. Um, you know, with all that said, it's, it's kind of more of a, like, it works. It's a, it's a decent cutter, but it's kind of more of a designer knife, right? It's kind of an art knife. It's not meant to be the greatest EDC knife of all time. So, that's basically what I'm getting at there. Um, 
So yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on the Arc Form Slim Foot as of right now, after a few days with it. I really like it. As you can tell, I had plenty to say about it. Um, it's a great knife. I'm loving it. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll, you know, keep it in pocket for another week or two. And I'll hit you guys with a review at that point. I think this is a keeper for me. Um, so I don't think it's going to be one of those where I come back one day and tell you I sold it. Uh, but you never know. Um, yeah, so really liking it. That's the Arc Form Slim Foot here. Uh, made by uh, Riot. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening to me uh, rant and rave as usual. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will catch you later.